Okay, students, welcome to week four. This week we're going to be talking about consumer behavior. And I want to note that these lectures provide you content that you're not going to find even if you have the old textbook um, or probably even if you use the AMA uh, dictionary website. So pay attention because this information you're going to get only from these lecture slides and it won't be available in the textbook or uh, on the on the, the resource websites that I'm giving you as alternates to the textbook. So this is the highlights from the consumer behavior course that I've taught at University of San Diego. So uh, let's talk about consumer behavior and you see your definition there. But really the question that we want to start out is asking ourselves, why do we buy things? Why do we buy things that frankly we don't need? We don't really need much to get along in this world. And if you remember at the very beginning of this course, in my very first lecture, I introduced you to Prala Jani on the left of your slide there, who's a breatharian, which is a, a Hindu practice of some devout Hindus uh, live on breath alone and they don't eat. And there's been some science substantiating this. Now, whether his claims of never eating for 70 years are valid or not uh, remains to be determined, but it does strike a chord in getting us to think about how little we actually do need to get by in this world. So why do we adorn our lives with all of these things? Are we being sold a bunch of stuff that we don't need or do we actually need these things? And here we enter the realm of consumer behavior. And the goal here as marketers is to get into the psychology of why people buy things and use these powers to help us get them to buy our things. So here's your five learning objectives this week. I apologize my video is kind of cropping on the number five one there, but read these at your own leisure and I'll be ticking through these items in this lecture. And your key terms pretty much match up with your learning objectives. Okay, so any good consumer behavior lecture is going to start out by talking briefly about the consumption process. So as consumers, when we go to buy things, there's really a three-part evaluation process that we always go through. We have pre-purchase considerations, and then we purchase the product, and then we have post-purchase issues as well. So and marketing plays a role in each one of these. Obviously, with pre-purchase, we're trying to get them to decide to buy our product and put it in their mental framework. And then in the purchase situation, we're trying to make it a pleasant purchase and encourage that purchase and perhaps even additional purchases. And then even after they've purchased, our job isn't done. We still have post-purchase uh, caretaking to do. You know, think of the example of if any of you have ever bought a car from a dealer, after you buy that car, uh, your first couple of services are usually free and you bring the car in and they give you a free oil change and they wash your car. Now, why do they do that? Because they know that, um, for one, the uh, drive off the lot laws now give people a cooling off period where they can bring the car back and say, you know what, it's not for me. And they have to take the car back. So they're trying to get you past that cooling off period where you're driving that car off the lot and taking it home and wondering, did I just get ripped off? Was this a good deal or not? Did I spend too much money? Well, that's what we call post-purchase dissonance or more commonly referred to as buyer's remorse. And they figured out that if they can keep the customer happy and wash the car and service the car, that we're still feeling good about our purchase because we're still evaluating our purchase even after we've purchased it. We might be very happy with that car purchase until we find out that somebody else, a friend of a friend, bought the identical car and they got it for less money. Now we feel terrible. That's where the post-purchase evaluation process comes into. People buy things for a variety of reasons. So in this lecture, we're going to be diving into why do we buy? People buy products to adorn their lives and kind of support the role and identity that they have for themselves. 
and marketing is influencing that entire process. So your first learning objective is the golden circle. And here we're going to hear from a uh, business strategist, Simon Sinek. You may have already watched some videos by him. He's pretty well known. And he has this concept called the golden circle, which really gets at the heart of why do people buy things? And from a marketing standpoint, how can we most influence that decision? So his main point here is that people don't buy products because of what they do, they buy products because of what they mean, what they mean. So, uh, and he has three great examples in this video. So please click on that video in the upper right. If for some reason you can't get that video to run, uh, say you're in the uh, YouTube video version of these lectures, I've also put the uh, link to the YouTube video in yellow there. So watch that video and that'll reveal what the golden circle is all about. Your next learning objective has to do with the concept of motivation and drive. So motivation is how charged up are we to pursue something? Perhaps you spend a bunch of time um, making yourself look and smell good to go out on a first date with somebody, right? You're very motivated. You want this person to like you. And part of the underpinning of that motivation has to do with your current state and your goal state. Think about pursuing a college degree. You might be uh, dissatisfied with your lot in life and your current career. And common complaint is I want to make more money or I, have, I want to have a job that has more meaning, more responsibility and uses my brain. So you're here at a dead end job and you want to be here at a job that has meaning and income that are at higher levels, right? And the bigger that gap is between I'm here and I want to be here, the more dissatisfied you are, that creates tension. And that tension is transferred into motivation. So motivation is goal oriented, wanting to change your situation. And we've all been in those situations. Think of how productive you are right before you're getting ready to go on vacation and you're at work and you're still getting tasked with things to do. and uh, how hyper productive you are clearing your calendar and delegating work and doing everything you need to do to make sure that you can clear your calendar for that vacation because you have a high degree of motivation and your goal state up here going to that beautiful trip to Hawaii or whatever is high. So drive is really the level of urgency that's created by how much tension you have dissatisfaction with uh, the gap between where you're at and where you want to be. The gap can also work in reverse where you were at and you're dropped down to a new low current state. That can be if you had a great job and you got fired and now your income's gone down and your life circumstances have gone down. Once again, you have a big gap. So, but drive is internally generated. It doesn't come from us as marketers influencing you directly. And that brings us to your next learning objective, this concept of drive theory versus expectancy theory. So drive theory is internal. Drive theory is the process you go through that says, if I do this, I will get this. So um, this helps reduce my, my tension accordingly. So for example, um, a lot of people wake up and they go to Starbucks and they get a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. Why? Because it reduces their tension. So I have this drive. I need something to wake up. And when I get my cup of coffee, it reduces that tension, right? Or um, I have to check my phone first thing when I wake up in the morning. Why? Because I wake up and if I don't check my phone, it creates tension. You know, extreme examples would be if somebody's addicted to drugs. Uh, if I don't take this drug, I'm going to have a bunch of tension, right? So I'm not talking about prescription stuff that is needed medically, but where somebody feels a strong need that they have to reduce their tension if they don't get this thing. Okay. So that's drive theory. Um, and it's the desire to reduce the tension of not having. So, uh, you know, food advertising oftentimes will move towards this drive theory. The expectancy theory, and I may have misquoted uh, that a little bit at the beginning of this slide, the expectancy theory is 
if I do this, I will get that. So, for example, you see uh, an ad there from Axe Deodorant, which is uh, encouraging men to use this deodorant. And if you spray more of the Axe Deodorant, you're going to get more, get more women, get more dates kind of stuff, right? So spray more, get more. So expecting a desirable outcome from certain behaviors. If I do this, I will get that. All right, so your next learning objective is the difference between needs versus wants and understanding that difference. So needs are the a motivation and how strong is that motivation to satisfy a drive. That can be a baseline uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs need like like physiological food rest thirst sex um, that'd be a baseline hierarchy of need but then you move up to safety and then kind of some uh, uh, self-esteem and self-actualization needs go up from there so um, but how strong is the motivation to satisfy that drive so that's a need a want is the direction of the motivation and this is where marketing steps in so how is the consumer going to reduce that uh, that drive that tension you're hungry and you haven't eaten and you want some food my sons would tell me dad we need in and out and i would say no sons you want in and out <laughs> and they would always get upset at me um, so marketing is trying to influence that need and make it specific that the consumer is going to want your product. So what gets us to want one product to satisfy a need versus another product to satisfy that need? Now that want is shaped by personal factors, many of them cultural. So the way your family was, et cetera, et cetera. So your reference groups and people that you hang out with, all of that can impact the direction of your motivation to having a specific want. I want a Chevy truck. I only drive Chevys um, versus just a need for a new truck, right? So that's the difference between needs versus wants. This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I'm not going to cover this now, but you can look at this and see how our baseline needs need to get taken care of first before we can move up to higher level needs. Now, these next slides, slides 11 and 12, you can just reflect on these questions that I have for you here. And I don't know about you, but I'm always really agitated when I've gone to a store and I've purchased something and I have to stand in line for a long time to, to buy the thing that I want to get. So um, that's what makes it stressful for me. Impatient once I actually have the thing I want to just pay for and get out of there. Let's talk about utilitarian versus hedonic needs. So we're talking about some specific types of needs here. So utilitarian, just think practical, practical needs. So I need a laptop that has this kind of features or I need a car that has this type of miles per gallon. And the factors that are influencing my purchase decision, my needs that I need satisfied are utilitarian needs, practical needs, right? And we like to think that we're always practical in our purchase patterns but it's not true and it's the whole reason why there's gossip magazines at the checkout counter at the grocery stores and also candy because we don't always operate off of utilitarian need satisfying behaviors sometimes we're also hedonic like hedonism so the need for things like excitement and fantasy and escape you know i want to go out this weekend and drink a lot and go to a rave or or some other kind of show and um, escape for a while, right? So that's why people go on vacation is they're trying to satisfy those, those hedonic needs. So as marketers, we need to understand what type of product are we selling? And if we're selling a, a luxury getaway to Bali, 
we're probably not going to be focusing heavily on the pragmatic needs of comparing prices versus other travel destinations and having you know very practical and analytical reasons um, why this is a good deal. No, as marketers, we're going to be focusing on the hedonic values that are going to motivate someone to satisfy that need because that's why they want to go to Bali in the first place. The next series of slides, 14 through 17, you can just view these. We've already talked about demographics. This is just a rehash of the common demographic segments. And understand demographics versus psychographics. You don't need to worry about social class. And you don't need to worry about this slide, but obviously marketing influences culture and culture influences marketing. So to wrap it all up with this first consumer behavior lecture, make sure you go back to those learning objectives. Those are the main things you need to capture out of this lecture. And you know, consumer behavior is a process. We have pre-purchase evaluation and then the actual purchase process and then a post-purchase uh, evaluation process continues. We need to understand what are the specific wants and needs that we're satisfying for these different consumer segments what motivates them uh, to buy a product? Why do they, what's the need that they need to satisfy in the first place and how can we insert our product in there as a salve to satisfy that need? And people buy things for a lot of different reasons. It's very complex. The way we adorn our lives and the, the roles that we play and the images that we create for ourselves um, and the products that we use and adorn our lives with are, are central to that. And another thing with item five here is that we're living in a new environment now where with technology, we are always on. We all have our cell phones at all times and they're always on and we're checking them. And, you know, we can look anything up if we need to know something. We can do a Google search. If we want to find a place to eat, we could instantly look at Yelp. And, uh, you know, if we want to go out on a date, we can swipe left and swipe right. So. Uh, we're in our our social media sites. We're constantly preening our image and sending pictures of the good meals that we're eating on Instagram. So this always-on consumer um, is creating some new needs where people are actually. Uh, I think we're going to see people are trying to unplug. So that's it for this first lecture. Thank you so much. We have one more on consumer behavior with your lecture number two.